So a friend of mine reached out to me and he was looking for a custom shoe bench. Something that could hold a couple pair of shoes within the main body of the bench itself that he can sit on, put his shoes on, slide his shoes off, put them inside. So he reached out to me, gave me some specs of what he was looking for, I did some plans, and then came up with what I'm calling the Draper bench. So we built this from a single sheet of 4x8 plywood. This is 3 quarter inch maple, um, so it's got some nice outsides. And cut down the main carcass here, did a lot of sanding, and it's going to require at least two adjustable shelves on the side. So we used the Rockler shelf pin guide to actually drill out the shelf pins for the shelves that'll go on the side. Now we're starting to assemble the carcass. It's been glued and pin nailed together. There's some screws in there as well for additional stability um, within those joints. Got it all glued together, got it pin nailed. I'm using the uh, 23 gauge pin nailer to hold all those in there, making sure that's square, nailing that together. And putting the top on has a little bit of overhang for a reveal. So you can see you got some screws there in the bottom. Making sure it's square. Adjusting a little bit while the glue sets. And then clamping it up. Now I'm starting to make the shelves for the unit. You can actually see there on the inner part of the carcass, not where the adjustable shelves are going. I'm starting to size up the shelves now to make them fit exactly the, uh, the space that's there. Instead of just measuring and cutting, I'm actually measuring it on the piece itself to make sure I have accurate shelves. You can see there's a, a little 45 degree lines going down. We were originally trying to put the shelves in at an angle so we can then close the door so the weight wouldn't be on the door itself. See, there's some putty there and again some other little marks on the side there. And we are originally going to put the shelves in that way. However, after getting them in there, testing it out, and dry fitting with my shoes, uh, they didn't actually fit in there. So, went back to my client and try to figure out another way here. And we ended up going something different, which I'll show you at the end here. And now I'm cutting some 3 quarter inch poplar, which I'm going to use for the edge banding. It's starting to fit that up and pin nailing into place. I'll come through later on and sand that down to the edges. Could use a hand plane for that. It'd probably actually be a lot quicker. I'm not great with a hand plane. So, power tools, power sanding, all the way. Just like rails and styles on a cabinet have the rails going across and the styles going completely from top to bottom. And now just coming in with a flush cut saw to trim that edge banding down to size so it fits perfectly. I'm going to start cutting the door. This is the initial take on it. Oh no, this is the, the new door. I originally made one that was three quarter inches. I needed to go with half inch, so I'm using half inch plywood for the front door and then sizing it up and making sure I got it. Even though my fence and everything is very uh, accurate on my saw stop, I'm just making sure that I have the right dimensions. So now on the front door, I'm putting on some edge banding along with some cat hair because I need to get this fit in nice and smooth. And also it doesn't need to have the rigidity that the actual carcass of the piece of furniture itself does. But it cleans up real nice after a little bit of sanding. Now this is the backer board for the cabinet and I'm using my multi buzz buzz tool here to go around a rectangle in the back because I had rough dimensions for where a electrical outlet was in the wall. And we'll go through how we handle that in a few minutes here. But I was using this tool to cut out a larger rectangle than was needed for the approximate positioning of this electrical outlet. In the side of the unit, I'm putting a USB and power plug so that my client can still have access to their plug that this bench is going to cover on the wall. So I'm measuring it out where it's gonna go. And you can see I'm using my multi buzz buzz tool again 
to cut out the plywood where that's going to go in the side of the unit. Now this hole doesn't need to be as nice and clean. See it's a little scraggly there. And that's okay because it's going to have an outlet cover around it. So it'll hide all that ugliness. I, would, I am going to sand all this up and I want to make sure it's square so it fits in there nicely. But this is going to be covered by a, an outlet cover which we'll see. Now I'm working on the piano hinge for the swing out door and cutting that piano hinge down to size and just cleaning up the edges with my Dremel tool. I'm going to put some magnetic latches on the door so I'm just putting the backer plates for those and figuring out where those are going to go on the door, fitting them up, fitting that piano hinge on there. And I'm using some three quarter inch material to just keep that raised up and flat on my tool bench there and starting to mark the holes where the screws for the piano hinge are going to go. Running those holes into the bottom of the door, drilling them out, and just using the screws to put that into place and making sure that piano hinge fits in there nice. If it's on any sort of angle, if it's got any sort of askewness, it's not going to close right. There we go. Close, looks good. Oh, actually just cleaning up the piano hinge. There's a little scraggly edge on there on my grinding wheel. There we go. This is the thing we came up with. So that is one of those behind the door hangers for shoes. And we're gonna put this on the door itself. So what I'm doing here is I'm just doing it some eighth inch piece of hardwood there. And I'm using those to put some stability into the actual shoe holder itself. I'm using some super glue to get that to fit in there. And putting one in the center and folding that over. So I have a place to secure that up to the door in the center and then putting one at the bottom here. Cover up those ugly cut edges from the larger shoe hanger, folding that over, gluing it in. So that'll be behind everything, so the only thing that's visible are just the pockets for the shoes. So a lot of super glue, a lot of pressing that down to make sure everything fit in there nicely. And because this was a half inch piece of plywood, you can see underneath there, there's another piece of eighth inch plywood that I had to use to raise up the screws for the handle that's on the front. Now the fixing the shoe holder there to the front door and screwing those into place. The screws for that middle section are behind the actual thing itself and I have another screw in there just for security. And these are some pre-bought feet we got for this particular cabinet to raise it up about four inches off the floor so that I can clear the molding and the feet in there were far too long so I had to cut those down with the angle grinder and then just cleaning it up with the Dremel tool making sure that the uh, things on there fit. I ended up going with a different insert for those but now finally getting to paint and this has about seven or eight coats of paint on it. I kept on finding spots that just weren't perfect so I had to keep on going through, sanding it down, going through, painting it, sanding it down and this is cabinet and furniture paint so it is can take a little abuse it won't scuff as much as much harder finish it's an oil based paint and now that I've got it all painted up I'm actually starting to put the hardware back on you can see I've got the magnet catches in the back there that's just pieces of wood with countersunk magnets in them here's me working on the feet laying out where they're gonna go there is like an inch and a half of molding that comes off. There's molding and then there's a round over bit on his floor. Um, so I needed to make sure the back feet were further out than the front feet so they weren't all equidistant in there. You know, for a small little entryway bench, this thing was complicated as hell. But it is finally complete. The Draper bench. It's an electrical outlet that goes here, which connects over to this. Got a couple USB ports, store your phone up here, whatever you want to do. It's got four shoe carriers in the door. Two 
adjustable shelves on a nice little piano hinge here. It's gonna be screwed into the wall so we can actually handle the weight. It's got a little catch chain here. There's a name for that. It's like, uh, you know, the things you have on your door in your apartment. And I just put these on, got the roller latches. So it'll actually stay closed when shoes are in there. Handle, feet, crap on the ground. There's that big hole in the back for the electrical outlet. Whew. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked that video, please like, subscribe, hit the bell. Check out some of our other content. We make loads of other things. We are compulsive makers and do a little bit of everything. Woodworking, leatherworking, metalwork, laser work. You name it, we do a little bit of it. Um, so please check it out and enjoy this cat hair right here.